everybody, and welcome to The Witch and the Hunter Knight, another NIS RPG from the minds of uh, fantastic games like Disgaea. So this game stars this Swamp Witch who basically wants to take over the world. Her name is Metalia, and she summons this creature as I'm showing you right now. This is the Hunter Knight, and he's like this little sprightly, little brainless dying golem kind of thing. And it's an action RPG. And combat is composed of, you got your five weapons, and you have your protectors and your accessories that, you know, make up your armor. For the weapons, they range from spears to hammers and swords and even magic maces and stuff like that. And they all have um, different properties, like some weapons will be stronger than some enemies, like big huge tank enemies. You know, you uh, have a better chance to basically, uh, I guess, damage them. So you like hit your hammer and it would do more damage than like a sword if it's like a big huge golem kind of thing. Now this is the hub area, this is the witch's place, and you go up from here and you um, go to the map here and you go throughout the levels. This is pretty early in the beginning, towards the beginning of the game uh, at this point, what I'm going to show you. And I just want to kind of go through a dungeon and kind of just show off how the game works, I suppose, and kind of go through my thoughts on it. Now, I am a huge fan of NIS. I really loved um, Disgaea. Uh, it's my favorite series that they do. And uh, it's kind of like the first JRPG strategy game that I ever played, the first Disgaea. And... Oh, I shouldn't really build building this up. This makes me sound like I'm gonna just destroy this game. Um, I, I like... <laughs> that's almost what I'm gonna do. I really like the way they make games. They make a game for a certain audience. It's a very niche audience. And, you know, they, they do what they want to do. Try new ideas. Sometimes those ideas don't really work out that well. But, you know, at least they try. Um, and you know what, they, they stay in business because they sell to that niche audience and a lot of the times they like quite a bit. Um, I think I'm part of that niche audience, but you know, I think I might be somewhere in the middle. Um, so it's basically a little hack and slash as you're seeing here. There's tons of info coming on the screen and it, it doesn't really mean much, you know. You can kind of pay attention, you kind of want to know what's going on, but uh, it's... You know, it's a lot of just stuff happening on the screen. And the combat, or not combat, but the stats in general, there's a lot of things in the works, just like Disgaea. I mean, Disgaea had so many mechanics in it, and you can make this game as complicated or as simple as you really want it to. I mean, that's that's kind of the fact of it. Um, uh, to me, you can pretty much enjoy this without having to delve too much in it. It's pretty grindy. Uh, it's pretty easy going for me right now because I kind of grinded for a little bit. But after the first like level or two, I was like, wow, this game's not too bad. Then the next level, it jumped up in difficulty quite a bit. And uh, you really got to work for it. You got to block, you got to dodge. And it's actually very rewarding. Um, if you see on the corner of the screen, well, hold on here. So this is a bonus point thing where, just like Nisgaea, if you reach a certain amount of like, experience or points, basically you're rewarded with some extra gear after you complete the mission. But as I was saying before, see that 96 in the corner there? It's kind of like a roguelike in a sense as well. Where like in a roguelike, you have a certain amount of points before you're like kicked out of the, the um, dungeon. This is the same. So use your G cals or G calories or whatever they're they're called or whatever. But we'll just say with G calories, <laughs> Giga calories. I think that's what they're called. Man, there's a lot of nonsense in this game. <laughs> but um, so every single action you do takes up some of that, and um, once you run out, that's that's it for you. And those glowing flower things, those are pillars, and they're basically save points. So you go to those things, and you can warp out of there. And once you warp out, the cool thing is you finish the stage. Uh, you go out, you collect your experience, and then you can go back to the hub world, and you can go back again and regrind or whatever. So that's pretty cool. The one thing I didn't like about, um, I also played the roguelike, um, the Guided Fate Paradox. And that was the first roguelike that I really kind of dove into. 
And I liked it quite a bit. The story was pretty quirky, the humor was there. It was just really fun. Um, it was really difficult though, and kind of unforgiving. This one kind of splices the two together. Um, kind of like the wackiness of Disgaea, at least in the combat, and maybe like the roguelikeiness. That's kind of, I don't know. Whatever. Uh, but anyway, so, I mean, just keep an eye on your meter, um, grind for a bit if you really want to, go to those pillars, and then transport yourself out. Um, so it's, you know, and if you die in the dungeon, you just lose a random item, and then you restart where you were before. So, it's actually not that punishing. Um, I mean, it is difficult, and obviously losing items is pretty bad, but there's so much loot in this game. Yeah, it's a little bit of Diablo as well. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. Um, now, let's get into some things, and this is the combat I really like, actually. And I like the art aesthetic. Uh, it's a very imaginative world, and uh, it's the, the art style is very bright, vibrant, and the character illustrations in the talking scenes, very, very good. So colorful. Um, they move their mouths, which is pretty cool, and the voice acting is kind of up and down. Um, but the thing I don't like is um, the character models in the actual game itself, everything looks like it's kind of like a meld between like 3D and like claymation. Um, and with the character anime portraits, it just, um, I don't, I don't know, it just doesn't mesh that well to me. Um, I was a little disappointed in it. It just kind of looks very off-putting to see the, the colorful portraits and the kind of ho-hum, weird character models. I don't know, something just doesn't jive with me with that. Um, another thing is... So the story is Metalia trying to take over the world, kind of, with these pillars. She sent the Hunter Knight out to destroy these pillars, which makes her release her swamp, and she wants to take over the world or something. And also she's dying, which you don't find out later why that's happening. Um, it's kind of weird. She's kind of an unlikable character. Um, let's, let's go back to this guy again, Laharl. He's the king, or, you know, the would-be king of the underworld, and, you know, he's the prince, whatever. And he's kind of a, a dick, to be blunt, but, you know, he's a lovable dick, and he's trying his hardest to, you know, be the ruler, and he is the, this is the netherworld, so he's supposed to be bad, but he's not, like, destroying people for like no good reason with his with his allies basically like no Laharl let's not do this let's learn some lessons you know via um flan and stuff like that and you know he learns his lesson and whatever and Metalia kind of has an arc like that but not really um this game is really vulgar and I like um kind of pervy and vulgar humor. I mean, I just reviewed um, South Park, but there's something about the dialogue and everything in this game that just, it just doesn't flow together. It's really just, it's like it's being vulgar just to be vulgar. Um, they say like bitch and slut a lot, and it's just, really really weird like I said I like that kind of humor but I think it's just because Metalia is just a super unlikable character uh, like again you kind of find out why but even so it's just like wow you have like no tact at all I I don't know it, you're basically playing a bad guy in this game and they throw batter in quotes people at you or people kind of in the gray that are just trying to stop you and you're supposed to feel for Metalia but they just do kind of a bad job about it um real quick here you go into these villages you can talk to these the, you know the people in there and they'll give you some um tips for the level or whatever and you can also invade the houses which grants you items and the animation for that is pretty long in general, if you've noticed, I, I kept the load times actually in because I wanted to show you. 
just how long the load times are. Um, I mean, altogether, I do like this game, but it's all over the map. Like, the story, which is super important in an RPG, I just don't like. Um, the world is pretty cool. Um, some of the art style I like and some things I don't like. Uh, the combat's really cool, but after a while it actually starts to get, I don't know, just okay. And there's not as much variety as I really wanted. Um, let's see, what else? I don't know, mechanically it's kind of all over the place. Like I said, long load times. And, like, the systems just kind of take a while just to get used to. And it's just kind of overcomplicated. And, um... Yeah, I don't know. Um, for p the fans of NIS, I think it's worth checking out, but for me, I still haven't set out my score for my review, but make sure you check that out in Examiner. But, uh, yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> this is the game. Boom, ba -jack, boom, boom, ba -jack, boom, ba -jack, boom. Boom, boom, pa-jack, 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 boom, pa-